Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man Stevens, hello, Rob, the old guy. You're listening to the Rob Charney. That's right, it's me, I'm here. And in theory, we should have a special guest. Emphasis uh, on very, the special. A very special. And we're going to do the, the lightning round of movies, since apparently no celebrities died today, so we're going to have to cut that bit out. Uh, <laughs> Top Gun movie director says they just wanted to make an old school movie. And have hmm. James, have you seen it? No, I actually have no desire to watch this one ever. I actually have to yeah. say this was probably the best movie I've seen in a couple of years. <laughs> just a mindless old school action movie. <clears throat> Well, it it, it it is definitely that it's it, the flying sequences are are cool. The story is okay, um, you know. But but yeah, the the flying parts were kind of neat. So. What 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 are you, I, okay. I, I what are you comparing the story to? This had about as much story as the original Top Gun, which is basically none. Well, you know, it was once again kind of a love story, and it was like, eh, all right, come on. And, I mean, but, I hey, I thought it was. You no, know, it's just me. I thought it was perfect. Um, even had the hilarious, the according to this one Twitter user, the, the homoerotic scene where they're playing on a beach. Um, I actually really liked the movie. By the way, I wish I remember the Twitter guy. It was quite hilarious. Um, yeah. Well, no, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the movie. It was well worth going to the uh, afternoon matinee half price senior discount. <laughs> How's that? Duck and cover. Okay. That makes it worth it. I just, yeah. I just really have no desire to see it. I, I really don't. And yeah, even Understood. you guys saying it was good, it still like doesn't change my my honestly lack if, of desire. If you have I, nothing else to do, and if you're bored out of your mind, it's worth watching. But you know, just wait till it's streaming or something, and then yeah. you know. But like John said, if you're bored out of your mind, you got nothing else going on. It's it's worth just watching some of the flying. It's it, it, it's kind of neat. It's a thousand times better than the Uncharted movie with the uh, Marky Mark, um, and the flying was amazing. They the what they did in the flying scenes was closer to being real than what they did on normally. Uh, and here's the remake portion. For some reason, they decided to make the Patrick Swayze classic and classic in air quotes Roadhouse remake. First look shared by Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm. I I love that movie. It's it's a perennial classic to me, but I'm not quite sure if they need a modern version of that. I'm looking to see how woke it gets, because that would be hilarious. Oh my. Well, speaking of remakes, did you hear that Highlander is supposed to be remade? Now, Highlander the movie, Highlander the series. Highlander Highland the movie. So the movie. here's The here's movies are supposed to come back with, uh, um, I'm drawing a blank, Henry Cavill. Oh. Okay, plays Witcher. So yeah, I'm kind of really. down with that. Now, if this was closer to Game of Thrones level of violence instead of the PG-13 PG movies we've had lately, I'll 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 be love it. I'll I'll love it. But if it's just, I don't know. I I'm, I'm kind of hard. I don't know how you remake that movie. The first one was really good. The the second one. Well, because now we have a lot better CGI and we can do all kinds of neat things. Oh, true. Right. Yeah, I actually kind of agree on Ryan. You know, there was kind of some, on Ryan. Uh, I don't Ryan agree on, on Ryan when, when, on anything. What well, Ryan's comment <laughs> years ago was there, there, there was uh, more or less. There's, there's like when you have limitations, there's art there. When you have CGI and you can do all this stuff, you're you're eliminating mm. some of the the amazing art that they have to come up with with the effects and the story and. No, it just gets rid of some of the cheesy effects and it gives you a little better effects. That's but that's not what they do. I mean, let's be honest. Um, I I, I kind of wish they'd make it with Adrian Paul. He's got to be in this movie. I, I'm hoping he's in it because he yeah. was the one that was supposed to have to, to take over after the original Highlander guy bowed out of it. <laughs> what hey, Highlander guy? Our special our special guest has finally appeared. What's up, y'all? <laughs> hey. Are you doing yeah, we're just uh, talking about Henry Cavill doing the remake of Highlander. So, is he really? Yes, that is. He's confirmed it, and there's a few other people that are confirming it. But I mean, until it's Bro. like in yeah, the works. Huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Can you imagine 
that movie without the stink of the 80s all over it, though, that <laughs> might be really good. Well, wait, yeah, how about I, that? Gone, doesn't agree. I, gone, I hope I hope they bring back Queen, though. I mean, throw some Queen for the soundtrack and, yeah. and, and we're good. Just just, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, hopefully so they I, do. I agree I've got you. a word for you. Highlander Meeks woke. Mm. I mean, dude, I look, I. <laughs> What what really could they do woke ab- ab- about it? Seriously? I mean really, what 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 would they need to? They wouldn't need to change anything. You know, there there might be a little more diversity to the cast, you know, the Kurgan might be black or something, but that's about it. <laughs> God, I, man, I have to admit if they do it, I really do hope a it's a completely original story instead of basically duplicating the original, which I think they're going to have to do to some degree anyways. Well, I mean, it's not like it was um, it was based off of a novel or anything, when, <laughs> not to my knowledge. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I you know, yeah, you can you can take the framework of it and just, you know, put it in 2022. You know, maybe maybe get somebody with an actual Spanish accent to play a Spaniard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I we'll yeah, they'll, I mean, they, they'll get somebody from Mexico to play a Spaniard. Yeah, give me like Diego Luna or something like that to do the uh, to do the the Sean Connery part. I don't know. Talk about Sean Connery. Hunt Uh-oh. for Red October movie is in development yet without one of its stars because a one is dead and the other one can't get a job because he shot somebody. Who? What? What was all that? <laughs> so uh, go ahead, John. Give us the details. Some might say the remake of classic film should never happen. However, though, those are rare times. The remakes and reboots seem to shine much better than the original film, and we would agree that Dread is very bas- uh, better than Judge Dread. Wait, 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 hold on. Time out. You, you can't compare Hunt for the Did Red They actually October. put those two in the same sentence? Yeah. How dare they? Like, no. the, 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 the reboot Dread was amazing, but you cannot compare Hunt for the Red October to... Sylvester Stallone's Drud, Judge Dread. That that's that that's actually horrible. That's apples and oranges. It, yeah, no well, I kind of I kind of enjoy that comparison. Y- you enjoy apples and oranges. Yeah, why not? All right. Uh, so the the you line was the no. so my line was the fact that Sean Connery's dead and Ambrosia. Alec Baldwin is having a hard time finding jobs because uh, he kind of shot and killed somebody. He's even said so that he's been having issues finding work. Well, do we really? blame them no i mean just just don't give them a gun yeah just yeah just find find jobs where oh he could be the new equalizer of course he's going to be taking jobs from denzel and queen latifah but i mean i you know what not for nothing i would i would hire alec baldwin right now for an action movie and hand him a gun (laughs) <laughs> right now, right this very moment, I'd be like, hey, come on in. Here's a gun. Because there is probably no actor that I trust Safer. more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right I now hear, with yeah. a with a with a gun fake or otherwise than Alec fucking Baldwin. Oh, no, they should that do. guy is gonna be so unbelievably paranoid the rest of his matter of fact, he might turn down the job. <laughs> he you might just turn should... no, I'm good. I'm good. You know, no. maybe maybe in some years, but but no, I'm good right now. They should, or he would be the most paranoid person you've ever seen, which is exactly what I want. They should make they should make a top secret remake and 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 have uh, have him in it. Make it an over the top gun movie. Since if you want to talk about ridiculous Hollywood stuff, you know what? Remake the Shadow. I love that movie. It's so dude. Bad. I kind of low key like that movie too. <laughs> It's so damn bad. It's so bad. So it's unbelievably bad, but it's it's something about it. A, it's the the bad guy. Tim Curry is yeah. he's he. Let's be honest. He makes the movie. Um, not, is it Tim Curry in that one? No, yes. no, yes, no. he is. Um, yes, he he plays the bad guy, the bad guy scientist. He doesn't play the the main bad guy. He plays. Oh right, yeah, the guy who's uh, who's who's trying to steal the other dude's work. Yeah. Wow, like, it's been Tim, years since I've seen that movie. Tim Curry makes that movie for me more than anybody else. Um, well, Tim Curry makes any damn movie, man. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I, I if I would actually watch him read the dictionary just because I love his his voiceover. <clears throat> God here's... damn it, Janet! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the fact that he that he did Rocky Horror Picture Show <laughs> in a garter belt and a corset. Yeah, no kidding. And that crazy wig and that unbelievably bright <laughs> lipstick, and then also Pennywise the clown. That's yeah. range. 
Well, that how, is about, right. how about the fact yeah. that, that according to people who've seen all those movies, because I haven't, um, that he owned it. Like, I've never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's never been on my list of things to see. I mean, you if you haven't seen, seen it by movie? now, it's not it's not exactly something yeah. I would say, hey, hey John. Yeah, I, you just have to go and you probably wouldn't even get it now. But. I haven't seen it or the sequel. <laughs> you haven't seen either one? <laughs> nope. Really? I actually, I re- dude, I recommend the new one. Honestly, I really do. There's a new Rocky uh, Horror movie. Hey, no, the new one. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, wait a minute. I mean, are you just scared of Tim Curry? Is that it? Yeah. I mean, is that yeah, what's going you, on? You're like you seen Home Alone scared too? Honestly, I, I haven't just, I haven't, it has been on my list, but it just hasn't been something that I've had set time aside. And Rocky Horror Picture Show, I've just never seen the radio, uh, the right, been around the hey, right audience. You know, you with. just need to get a cigarette lighter and go to one of the theaters that it's still playing in. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And let everybody know it's your first time. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> So everybody seems to like Creedence Clearwater Revival. Now you can actually watch them CCR. one of their uh, lost shows. Footage of CCR's storming set has been long thought lost, but it will be released on September 16th as a live album and film. You can watch premiere in the fortunate sun right here at uh, Guitar World. So apparently there was a, a performance in Prince Albert Hall and the footage was thought lost and they're actually releasing the footage of the concert. Nice. Uh, which is, which is awesome. I think because I Don't you I, have to go to the Guitar Center to watch it. Guitarworld.com. Hey, sh- shitty question: Whether I'm right or not. Um, did John Fogerty die? No, he's alive. It's is his brother. The alive? drummer died. That's what. Okay, I knew somebody from CCR, and they uh, okay. they died. They died apparently still hating each other, which really sucked. I would that love to suck. see a reunion. Uh, <laughs> Too late. Um, uh, the Royal Albert Hall performance became a legend in its own right because the footage from it was long lost thought. When it was first released through Fantasy Records in the 80s, the label had to perform a hasty retreat. The audio they thought was from the London was from the Oakland Coliseum. Whew. It was branded hmm. the concert and everybody forgot about the CCR's two-night stint at the Royal Albert Hall except fans who knew there had to be some footage out there. Some thought it had to be on tape in a can somewhere. I actually <laughs> might go try to find that. <clears throat> I mean, uh, really, the people who thought there had to be, that's wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, this is this is not exactly the age of digital lives forever on the internet era we're talking about here. You know, I mean, that's it could have very easily been, you know, lost in a fire or some guy just, you know, like broke the tape and threw it out. I, I mean, especially since people... most especially since most of the silent film era has completely gone through a couple of fires they've had in the last 100 years. Yeah, I, I mean, people don't either forgot or don't realize how how fragile those things were. You know, VHS tapes really changed the game. I mean, not even just for like consumer products, but like the way that the actual encasement sort of protected that tape. Um, it, before, it also, I mean, it's on a reel, it's open, it's exposed to the elements for the most part. Um, I mean, and shit happened. <laughs> you know, the, the actual reel going through the camera <laughs> could have lit that bitch on fire. Just some little thing. And next thing you know, there goes your entire print. <laughs> But a lot of the old school um, prints, the silent film era, were on celluloid. Celluloid, if that's yes. it. So that's it, it. it was so um, volatile that in some cities they were it wasn't allowed in public transportation because there was a chance it would self ignite, <laughs> which wasn't uncommon, by the way. There was a whole yeah. portion of Inglorious Bastards dedicated to the explanation of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was just yeah. gonna say. <laughs> so I have. Um, I have a list. Yeah, that, of, I got a short that list. That case of must have been in uh, asbestos to preserve that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. Here's coated eight, in some uh, some uh, radium. Eight finished movies you won't be seeing anytime soon. I'm just going to go through the list. Tell me. So these interested. are these are movies that have already they're done. <laughs> They're finished. They're in the can. Huh? In the can, as, it, as, as they used from, to say. <laughs> they're banned from theaters, the United States, etc. They're just banned. So number banned. one, number they one, is or they're just not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I just wanted is, an explanation. Are they banned? Yeah, there's a lot or, of reasons. Or, yeah. So or eight is finished just, movies you won't be seeing anytime soon. So they have been finished, but they're not going to release them. Or that could I mean, be for you'll, for you'll budgetary just... reasons, for for um, certain legal reasons. <laughs> you couldn't license certain music. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, we're just, just busting your chops because we want to know. You'll see. So and first one is an obvious. It's so that you can't finish your story. 
I'll just Go keep ahead. talking. We uh-huh. can have an hour of this. Um, Songs of the <laughs> South, for an obvious reason, Disney has decided South? it will never release this ever again. Mm. Okay. Um, so, but wait a minute, wait a minute. So, the top of your list the is a movie that people already have seen. Yeah, the one that I can find on the internet. Well, here's Fuck Disney. If, if here's I really thing, wanted though, to watch it, Disney has never actually released this. This escaped from a European release and it was placed on the internet. Everything you've seen has always been on third parties, non legal bootlegs. What about from like way back in the day, like when we were kids and shit? It was released in the 80s, was the last time it was ever publicly released. But by that Disney. was Disney that put that out. And that was in the United States because it was the uh, Disney was sued by the NAACP about it. And then Disney said, yep, you're right, our bad, and has been locked in the vault ever since in the United States. Around the world, it's been released. It's just never been released in the United States since the uh, the 80s. We were the last. Who the hell in Europe it. is just clamoring for that movie? Good question. <laughs> Batgirl. Um, nobody's quite sure why that'll never be released. Oh yeah, apparently yeah. I, I think it was due to like audience testing. I've got opinions about audience testing as a concept <clears throat> in general, but apparently it just tested so poorly. If it's the one I'm thinking of, um, that they just they just tanked it. They're like it's not even worth the advertising. Yeah, it's there. The- okay, there's something. There's a behind the scenes thing people never think about is the amount of money put into advertising can sometimes equal the actual budget of the movie. That's you know, true. maybe not for, I mean, shit, I mean, probably even close for some of the Marvel stuff, uh, as expensive as those movies are. I mean, they they put advertising everywhere. We're talking about big studios. So sometimes it comes down to like, hey, I, do we really want to put another 50 million into billboards and TV spots and, you know, all that. So. So the next one was I Love You, Daddy by director Louis C.K. Louis C.K. was trying to establish himself as a serious filmmaker with I Love You, Daddy, when multiple sexual misconduct accusations against him <laughs> emerged before its planned release, planned release in 2017. Uh, though the comedian since released another feature film, Fourth of July, I Love You, Daddy, has never seen the light of day. I, I wonder if it's because he doesn't own the rights. Because he puts all of his stuff on his website. It, it could be that. It, it Most likely it's that and the... Even though he's trying to make a comeback, he's still kind of, um, uh, you know, don't touch. Between his I, problems yeah. and, the, and the movie title, I, I don't <laughs> think he, maybe uh, he does, this needs to rename that movie. And, and, but he, he, the interesting thing about Louis C.K. is <clears throat> that dude couldn't give a shit anymore about him being, you know, like, like quote, canceled like back in the day. Um there's there's no way I would ever sit here and be like, like, oh, it's totally fine that that all happened. No, shitty and, you know, thing. And I'm not going to go into the whole 20 minute opinion I got about it. But at the same time, he did his best to make amends and he's trying to move on with his life. Let's just, you know, let's let's move along. There's a there's a path to forgiveness here, you know, a path to redemption. And this dude on his website for years has been putting out stuff to not just loyal fans, but people who have refound him and all those things. That movie, uh, Fourth of July, is available exclusively on his website, and he will absolutely make his money back. Um, he paid for that movie out of his own pocket based off the money he made from his last special that he put out on his website. So um, yeah. look up, if you want to see another guy who basically did the same, look, look up as Andrew Schultz. Uh, he he, like Netflix, Amazon, one of these people uh, paid for a special. He actually spent his life savings buying it back, put it on his yeah. website for a limited release. Uh, this is an obvious one: "The Day the Clown Cried" by Jerry Lee Lewis. That'll never see the light of day. Uh, hmm. um, um, All Star Weekend. Be, What's that? I might be dumb. Why is that an obvious reason? Because uh, that's the one about a clown being forced to take, I think, Jews to the gas chamber or children. You know, trying to make them laugh as they're being taken to their killed. La- yeah. It's yeah. Being murdered. This is the I one- mean, it's not exactly an unapproachable subject, but I mean, you know, you'd have to you'd have to do it with some 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 gravitas. I don't know how the movie was made. So I've heard <coughs> multiple third party accounts of people who have actually seen the film and, and it goes from, oh, this is a horrible film to interesting. <laughs> so um uh, All Star Weekend by Jimmy Lee Fox. No idea. Uh, Kevin uh, uh, George. It's with Kevin Spacey. Eh, the less this, this kind of sucks. Movie was Maybe called it's George. Spacing. It's uh, G O R E. 
Gore? Excuse me. I'm tired. <laughs> Gore. Yeah. Gore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, mm. So Keep and going. The la- and the last one was the, the 90s uh, Fantastic Four, which was made solely so they can keep the rights to the film. Hmm. Oh, really? Oh, I'd love to see that. It's It's been released. But they never released it. Pub, uh, 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 I don't think it was ever major league released because uh, one of those days, one of those film magazines, you know, the really big ones with with cool pictures. I actually read about it back in the day, and there's you can find copies of it online. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. The '90s <gasps> version of that that must be hilarious. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. We're off of movies. That would be pretty interesting. <laughs> Not real flicks reviews at the moment here. <laughs> Okay, one one last little review. It's not a movie, but um, right. I think I have to recommend Terminal List to the three of you. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of skeptical when it comes to the like the Amazon originals or the Netflix originals. I think specifically Netflix because they're just I think throwing a shit ton of money at actors, uh, getting them to do some cookie cutter shit. What would otherwise yeah. be made for TV? Which is basically what Netflix is, but Amazon Prime put out this this show based on a novel. Um, yeah, that's on my list to watch. So it was based. It's, uh, so it was based on Jack Carr's 2018 novel of the same name. Yeah, and it's actually really good. Surprisingly, hmm. like like some of the the military stuff, it either goes into ridiculous territory or like this weird like like fanboy territory. Um, this one actually is like, we're telling a story about this dude and we're just Who's doing all of the dude. other stuff good enough to where nobody bitches at us. Like it's, it's shockingly good. This, the, mm-hmm. the series tells the story of a Navy SEAL who seeks to avenge the murder of his family. It stars Chris, Pl- Chris Pratt, who serves as a directive, direct executive director. I've heard of this. I don't know why I've heard of this, but I have heard of it. Yeah, Amazon's been pimping it pretty hard lately, and I finally watched it. Um, I think I still got a couple of episodes left, but I was like, "Like, oh shit, man! I think I need to text James about this." <laughs> yeah, it's on my list to watch. I haven't gotten around to it. I've actually been recently watching The Bear, which you guys probably haven't heard about it, but it's a show about a, a chef who goes from fine dining to opening up a. Or not opening up, but taking over his recently dead brother's restaurant. And it's actually a pretty good show so far. I had a lot of people in the cooking world telling me, you got to go watch this show. You got to go watch this show. And I'm like, fine, fuck it. I'm watching it. Leave me the hell alone. (laughs) They shamed you into it. But it's a pretty good show. Wow. But yeah, Terminal List is on on mine to to watch. So Yeah. Terminal List. Hold on. I got to play a sound effect for my next story. Oh, time to duck and cover. The bombs are coming down. Dude, this is Fallout. so the U.S. flexes its military might to Earth by launching a nuclear deterrent. The United States has flexed a, bi- bi- flexed a bicep of its military, performing a launch of its Minuteman three and a test to demonstrate its response capabilities, which is the first time I've heard in a long time they're actually launching ICBMs to test. Just the uh, missile or a warhead? Uh it looks like I'm the sure whole just thing. a missile. I, I think yeah. we've banned I don't think like they... nuclear testing, right? Well, yeah. yeah I mean, I, it's, we're not it's gonna, probably we're a launch thing. Up. Why don't we? Well, there are. <laughs> I have no doubt there are actually nuclear capability or uh, missiles with nuclear bo- weapons in it. But no, this was just a test. Oh, this... sweetie, it's pronounced nuclear. <laughs> the test was concluded by Global Strike that Command of the you, Air buddy. Force. <laughs> <laughs> At 12.49 Pacific time on August 16th, the Minuteman three intercontinental ballistic missile was launched from Vandenberg Space Force. Ooh, Vandenberg. That's, isn't that, that's my local one. Oh, yes. that, I'm sorry. I can space. see rockets take off from there. Bay, uh, located like in California, according to Colonel Chris Cruz, the 576 flight test squadron commander, this was <laughs> to demonstrate... Uh, demonstrative of how our nation's ICBM fleet illustrates our readiness and reliability of the weapon. I thought it was kind of a cool story. Dude, I don't know. Look, I I would pay a freakish amount of money to be like like at viewing distance of a nuclear bomb. Like a like a test site. Not not obviously anything where I gotta worry about like, oh, there goes all my friends and family, but just 
like in get, get, take me to the atolls you know that place is already wrecked anyway who cares and i damn i want to see a nuclear bomb go off in real life holy shit hmm. well you know what's gonna happen it'll be the last thing you see yeah oh no i'm not i mean you know that's the the, the thumb he no, wants no, me no, safe no. I, James and I will make sure that you're there at the scene of the crash. <laughs> hey, I always said if uh, if we get into a nuclear war with like anybody and it turns into that like you know mad situation, I hope one of them hits me in the forehead. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. Highly, I'm not. I don't want to be the guy around uh, uh, during a nuclear apocalypse. I highly doubt your neighborhood is the first thing they're thinking of taking out. Yeah, which really actually kind of sucks because I'm probably within like fallout range depending on wind. Uh, <laughs> But I'm not really near any major military targets. If they hit L.A., it would be one of those, um, what, what do you call it, demoralizing attacks. You no, know? not really. Who's going to say, oh, it's Hollywood? You know, everybody's like, well, at least they hit Hollywood. <laughs> That's yeah, I mean, yeah, you just, <laughs> but, you know, 10, 20 million people die and everyone's going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, probably- Texas is going to be like, hey, man, look, we talked a lot of shit, man, but that's fucked up. No, no, Texas is going <laughs> to go. They're going to target. LAX, <laughs> probably. Let's be honest. I mean, maybe, Texas but it's would... going to be NORAD. It's going to be, you know, uh, Strategic Air Command, you know, that kind of stuff. And But th- let's be mm. honest. If, if they knew California, Texas is going to be like, our, ta- our turn, you know. Oh, well, that's that's why uh, I don't know who the hell I was talking to about this, where they, they ran all kinds of uh, um, simulations like Russia is who I meant by they. Sorry ran all kinds of simulations about like like uh um this is probably entirely apocryphal don't take this as a gospel um ran all kinds of simulations about how they would do okay we can attack from this way we can do this first we can go in uh to attack america from the north the south the east the west a airplane sea the one thing they couldn't account for was the citizenry they're like yep. we had plans for your military like like we 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 kind of knew what to expect we knew how to counter it in a in a theoretical kind of a way they couldn't account for the citizenry it, that's 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 be honest everybody brags how crazy their 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 people are americans are fucking crazy especially when it comes to the fact that you know we'll fight each other until you fuck one of a uh, you know screw with one of us and we're yeah. like okay you're dead but the thing is is we've actually had one of those things come up about every generation or so to remind us that we're all on the same side it's 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 almost been too long the war in iraq and afghanistan was not one of those like hey america we're all in this together we weren't being attacked we weren't you know uh doing those things we were we were it was a it was a million miles away as far as your average american is concerned so i uh we got to find a great uh, transition music but i i did want to give out a shout out to a dylan kuehl k-u-e-l-h he's a, a gentleman with down syndrome graduated with a four-year degree at 38 from evergreen state college in washington state Fucking a. i think he's the according to the article i think he's the big man becomes first graduate with down syndrome from his college um, I just wanted to say I think that's that's that that's badass. Um, congratulations! I doubt you ever hear this, but um, to you and your family, I think that's a pretty badass accomplishment. Hell yeah, smarter than me. Huh. Not an accomplishment, but you know. So uh, excuse me, yeah. So Carol's passion for creativity led him to study for a bachelor's art degree. He enjoyed uh, classes in painting and dance as part of his curriculum, but his primary focus was on writing. Out of nine hundred graduates, he was the one of three to be selected to give the address at the graduation ceremony. Oh. Celebrate your abilities. Kuhl, Kuhl, my apologies, I can't pronounce your last name, tells his fellow students in his speech, live your life with ambition and pride. We can take a leaf out of this inspiration, in, inspiring young man's book, which is bound, it seems, by enthusiasm, positivity, determination, and a whole lot of motivation, motivating hard work. Congratulations. Yeah, I've seen yeah. people dealt a great hand in life and be cynical pieces of shit. And I've seen people dealt shit hands be the most optimistic people in the world. It, life is literally about perspective. Yeah. Hmm. That's that, pretty about awesome, though. Yeah, I, I thought yeah, it was, it's, it's very good. I, I saw that. And hey, like, man, we don't talk about positive that much. <laughs> that's good. That's a great segue for this. Today's show is brought to you by Audacity. Audacity. The gamer dignity is overrated. Go to O D D A S S I T Y dot com. That's O D D A S S I T Y dot com. Pick up a card game, 
from this website or selected stores. That's Audacity, Audacity. Audacity. An unforgettable party game for mischievous people. There and do me a favor, use Mad Tria, all caps, all one word for 10% off your final order. Make sure you tell Miss Audacity that the Mad Trio sent you. Yeah. I, 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 if any of you guys didn't have a story, I had a question for you. I, I was talking to my cousin about this uh, yesterday, actually. California said to ban all new gasoline cars in 2035. Which is yeah, good luck with that. We brought that up a few years back. Uh, we'll ban all man, new manufacturing, yeah. uh, not not the like the the owning of such cars well, no, or you know, the sale, the sale of new uh, new right. ones. So if you have new. if you have a twenty thirty four, you can still have it, but the twenty thirty five electric cars um, are will be the order of the day. And I'm I'm curious about this because my thought and kind of his thought too was. We're not sure how the United States as a whole, because this is going to happen. There's a lot of states who are going, oh, California, great idea. Um, how can we support it? Um, California is known for having brownouts and other issues when it comes or rolling blackouts. We don't have enough power generation. We're trying to switch over to more green energy, which hasn't been great. Um, California state code actually states for building, all new buildings must have solar panel, uh, must have one or two. So my, my question was, do you think this is going to be a boondoggle? Because I think this is going to be a very I painful. I can tell you now that if the <laughs> infrastructure is not up to snuff at the time they plan on rolling this out, it will not happen. This is um, it's not it's not a hey, should we do this? It's one of those like, well, yeah, we should do this. It should eventually be that. And car people, you can still buy those cars. And I promise you, mechanics will keep those things on the road forever. You can buy kit engines put it all together brand new and whatnot and still drive gasoline cars. Um, That's actually an interesting question. Um, what is considered the sale of a new car? Um, is it yeah, like a, like a new manufactured car? Well, you know, I, so. I haven't, well, here's the question is it solely depends on how the law actually reads. Are they talking about components or you, are you talking about buying a car just from Ford? Like if you well, have like, you know, I would you, imagine it's one of those things where your average American citizen is going to just buy viability like, OK, do I want to buy a kit car and put this whole thing together or pay a mechanic twice what I can get uh, twice what it's uh, what it's really worth to put this thing on the road? Or I'm just going to go buy a family car, electric car, because that's what's out there. Well, I see, John, your, your modular car idea comes in handy this way. That way you could swap it out, <clears throat> either a battery or a gas, whichever engine you want in it. See, I'm just saying that, you know, what I'm sure California is going to be doing is any vehicle, let's say they decide to implement this full scale next year. 2023 models all must be electric in California. Yeah, that, that's, uh, what, yeah. that's what I assume it's going to be, but a shitty California. So, yeah. And yeah. Ryan, to say your infrastructure question, it's California. Oh, no, I don't think that it's going to happen that quick. But it's I mean, it's dude, it's got to It's I mean, really, we got to figure this shit out a little bit. You my, know? my couple of questions um, are we, we have a state who's been working on the slowest bullet train in history for 20 <clears> years. <throat> Uh, and also, if you pay attention to the gun laws in the state of California and some of the car laws, I'm not quite convinced it's it's, it's going to go off to speed. The other thing is the cost entry. In 2035, <laughs> are you going to have a Tesla that costs the price of a, a used car? Um, the cheapest, like, you can get fairly decent mid-range to high-end cars for 25 grand. A lot of money. But, yeah. like, I think that the low-end Tesla is 40 but that's the thing is, I mean, I, I guarantee you the cost of electric vehicles will be down to to just whatever reasonable car costs are at the time <clears throat> for any other car. It'll it'll be it'll be competitive in the market. The infrastructure is going to be the main problem. Um, you need to be able to generate enough power and store enough power to do that. Um, California, Arizona, New Mexico, most of Texas are are kind of unique in the we've got more sun than your average bear. Um, you know, especially places like Arizona, where I mean, you, I mean, it's almost insane if you're not throwing some some panels on your roof. Okay, uh, I, I got a question for you. A place like Canada, when they get they so according to some of the YouTubers I watch about Canada, they get okay sunlight at best for solar. Yeah. So what what about places like that in the United States? <laughs> 
Well, so that's the thing is that it's not about one solution. It's about implementing all of the solutions. So, it's not just a le- uh, um, wind. It's not, not just solar. It. Those are those are holdover yeah. things until we talk everybody back into nuclear power again. So my, Stop my being cousin, pussies and let's throw some nuclear <coughs> power plants up. My cousin brought up something that I've never heard of, and um, he brought up a thorium reactor. And instead of using water, they use superheated liquid salt as the coolant. That's and what the Russians do. Um, and he, he was saying Chernobyl that was that. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why it melted down. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we've got way better technology these days, um, yeah. even compared to us, let alone compared to Russia. You know, our, our, our capacity for putting safe nuclear energy out there is way beyond anybody's concerns. I just I just hope it <coughs> excuse me. I just hope we do it. And and next time we build a nuclear power plant, can we please not build it near water since Three Mile Island and the one in California all seem to be be, be near large bodies well, they, and or oceans. They have to be until they can figure out how to cool all of this more efficiently and safely. And so that's why for the most part they're near where there's large bodies of water. But they yeah, have, and they I have mean look, right you can even build a lot of little just, mini sorry. Well, did they have to be right near them? Like, I think Fukushima is that what is like right on yeah. top of the, like like on a cliff it, type of thing. It's like you could build a large intake pipe. Come on, Fukushima was one of these things where short sighted thinking that you know, there'd never be a right. tsunami and that right. you know those those generators would never get taken out. And oops, yeah, you know. No, and, and again, our 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 technology is is miles ahead of those sorts of things. And you can build a lot of little basically in layman's terms, a mini nuclear power plants that if they something goes catastrophically wrong, which it won't, everything's fine. It's just underground and nobody gives a shit. So, so okay, well let's just lock up behind <laughs> us and take off. The uh the the ideas behind uh bringing back more nuclear energy now has to do with not building these huge plants like yeah. we've been doing in smaller scale uh, nuclear sites that are easier to set up get built you know the the way uh, a nuclear plant is built was built because we haven't built one in a while is that you know everything had to be built on site and you can't reduce a a price for a nuclear power plant by that what it has to be is being able to be built in a factory and then could be shipped somewhere and so uh that, that's Not the way they're looking at power plants yeah. So anyway, that's the, we are we are definitely looking at the ability to do that in a smaller scale, but you know more up. You know, that's and and that's good, why you, know. you need something like wind and solar and whatever else we can come up right. with, painting everybody's roofs white to get us through the next twenty, thirty years until we can implement all of those things on a on a large scale. It's all, all of it is is a is a band aid until we get to that point. You know, we, I think we've talked about this before, and, and one of the problems still is, you know, we're generating all this electricity now by coal and oil and diesel and all that, and they keep saying, oh, this is the green alternative to electricity, until you start looking at what's producing all this electricity, and, and that's the whole reason why we're talking about what we're talking about right now is that, you know, there has to be alternatives. It can't be any one thing. Solar can't yeah, do it by itself. Absolutely. Wind can't do it by itself. Uh, yeah, you, you know, got to chip away at this problem from the edges. Yeah. There, there, there was another solution that I remember reading years ago about, and I don't know if they've ever done it, is um, there was a way to generate electricity by people walking. So all like, um, it's like you have um, New York in a, in a subway. They have a uh, this, this like layer on top of the ground and people walk over and then from that they generate electricity as well. Just kinetic energy? Yes, that, yeah, that's the word. A, I don't think it's been proven to be... Uh... Yeah, I think it's scalable. One of those. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, exactly. Right. And they tried that with uh, with certain types of roads. Let's let's yeah. make things like solar powered roads, and that shit fell apart in in, in oh, that uh, failed in, right away. So in I, utero, I do have an answer. Waveform. There was a, a setting these things out in the ocean, with, mm-hmm. right? With with the waves going up and down, and, and yeah. capturing that energy. And I, I mean, maybe if you could do the scale large enough, you might be able to. Make a light bulb. So, yeah, and we pretty but, much tapped every decent river that we can dam up. You know, yeah, what I mean? just hydroelectric. Well, no, no, I well, disagree going with that. There's still plenty of places to put dams. I, I, I sure. do have some. Well, I, I do have some, have some answers real quick. So, are there any new new <laughs> nuclear power plants being built in the United States? I actually didn't know this. The newest nuclear reactor to enter service was Watts Bar Unit Number Two. 
with 1,122 milliwatt net summer electricity generation in October 2016. And the oldest one was uh, built in 1969. I did not know there were any newer-ish nuclear power plants in the United States. Newish. Newish. So wait, that was the last one was 69? No, it was uh, 2016. Oh, okay. But there was, so what I'm understanding, or at least what I'm, 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 assuming is they just essentially added onto an existing power plant our article didn't say but it was the newest reactor built so yeah yeah no so just a new reactor inside of an uh uh, an existing plant that's an easy thing to sell you know you can sell that to the public let's get away from nuclear energy and talk about beer here for a moment hell yeah what what, what type of beer that that, that's that's beer just not you know i i can do uh, so, so this is an easy one, kind of an easy one. This is a listicle for, for those of you that miss certain beers. This is discontinued beers that you'll sadly never see again. Okay, because some of these you may have heard of, some of you probably haven't. But uh, for instance, the number, the first one that's been discontinued that you'll never see again is Miller High Life Light. And uh, Wait, they had that, a light that, of that didn't surprise me it's because a that shitty beer. Yeah, it's <laughs> because M- Miller Highlight was light enough as it was, and, and then uh, let's awful. add a light to it. Champagne so, of beer, my ass. I'm, why, I'm trying to figure out how light you can make that beer. I mean, was it drinking yeah. water? Or oh, that I know, bad. it was the it was the the white claw of beer. You remember uh, 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 <laughs> natural light is the is about as bad as it gets. That's as close to yeah, to Coors water. Light. But <laughs> I'll say I got a family member who just drink lives on Coors Light. Uh, anyway, uh, Pete's Wicked Ale. You guys remember Pete's? I remember Pete's. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I did so the same great. thing. I went, oh yeah, I remember Pete's, and actually it was a pretty <laughs> decent beer, but it's been out of business for quite a while now, and it's never coming back. They folded. And then how about Falstaff? Now, there's an old beer that hasn't been around for quite a while, but Falstaff, when I was growing up as a kid, was a very common. I, I feel like beer. Falstaff was a thing that that never got to the, never got past the pull-off tab. Mm, maybe, although, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, believe it or not, in the 60s, it was the third largest beer brand in the USA. Wow. wow. Yeah. So it was pretty big at one time. Um, there we go. This is one that I'm not sure I remember. Midnight Sun beer. Yeah, I don't know that one. It was a a no. barley wine beer, apparently. Of some Ugh, yeah, Jesus. I don't know. That sounds like a horrible a wine beer. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they mean by that. Maybe it was fermented longer. But anyway, I I don't even remember. I don't remember even hearing of it. But it wasn't. So with that name, Midnight Sun. You can guess where it started from, right? Alaska. The Alaskan right. beer. So they don't have the world's greatest growing s- season. And there, everybody so. in Alaska is batshit crazy. So that doesn't <laughs> actually surprise me. So here's here's yeah. a bit of an answer for you after using the Google machine. A uh, barley wine is typically re- reaches an alcohol strength of 6 to 12% by volume is brewed from specific gravities as high... Da, da, da. There are two premier styles is American, which tends to be hoppier and more bitter, and colors ranging from light brown and Great. English style, which is bitter, less bitter, and may have a hot. Just what we flavor. want. Might as well make it hot, too. Make a hot beer. <laughs> oh. Good God. Jeez. <laughs> I just, Meisterbrow. Guys, remember Meisterbrow? No. I think I've seen it in movies that, or something. Yeah, it was actually a beer that was put out by Miller, and uh, Miller Brewing Company had it for a while. It's a little before you guys' time. It's the 70s. How okay. about uh, <laughs> Pretty Things Jack Do? The hell? Is that a yeah, so. that English show? <laughs> it was a Boston Philly beer. And huh. uh, it was basically, and, I, and I'm not, not even certain why it's in this list, but it was there because it was limited run. But What was the name it of it? It was a tangy lemony beer. It was called Pretty Things Jack Do. Doer. So Sounds like D- the uncle that goes around touching people. What a horrible yeah, name for a product. That is a horrible, horrible yeah, name. So how about uh, Southampton Black Raspberry? <laughs> Here we go again. Now I know why these beers aren't around Jesus. anymore. I, I, I'm sorry. Names. You cannot put fruit in beer, damn it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. I if, if I wanted, I if I wanted to drink fruit, I'd make a cocktail or drink a fucking wine. No shit. Well, here's an English style beer, Goose Island King Henry. Hmm. There's a hmm. name. 
Yeah, these are so, really long-winded names. So yeah, some of them. I feel I feel immediately so, like rebelling against that beer. <laughs> well, actually, it was interesting. It was uh, let's see how how did they, they say that it was brewed in and stored in Pappy Van Winkle twenty-three barrels. Now, Pappy Van Winkle is a very high-end uh, whiskey. And uh, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I still feel like throwing it in the Boston Harbor. Yeah, huh? Brits. How about Ice House Edge? Hmm. Some Molson Coors beer again. Ice House, I remember. Ice House Edge, I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> That, that sounds like one of those marketing failures. Like, hey, let's let's make it cool sounding with edge. yeah, put it edge. It may have been yeah. Uh, so, Milwaukee's Ned... best premium. Mm, I've heard again, of that. Molson Coors. It... These Coors didn't have a lot of luck with all. Is these that different than just Milwaukee's best mm, premium? So it might have been like Pabst's Andecker. It, uh, yeah. like one of those yeah. uh, Miller and Miller High Life kind of deals, maybe. Maybe who knows? Last one on this list is red, white, and blue lager. I remember that one. Wasn't particularly good. Was <coughs> was that? Did know. it come out? I don't like you... lagers anyway. That answers that question. Did it? Come you know out what? I do very much like lagers. Lagers and stouts are are generally my jam. I like stouts. Lagers depends. I, you know, there's always a good beer in anything. Sure. So maybe not light beer. Maybe so, not IPAs. <laughs> I've so, never. I don't think I've ever had an IPA where I'm like, yeah, give me six more of those. So Pappy I, Van Winkle is now uh, on the alcohol. I want to try at a hundred and nineteen dollar MSRP, right up there with ooh. Johnny Walker Blue. I want to know why that, it's worth dude. that price. That's oh, expensive shit. stuff. Uh, anyway, that was uh, something different than the hours and fifteen twenty days that we've been talking about movies so. well i i have a funny one and then james can go just this is the headline ozzy osbourne swore off acid after talking to a horse for an hour mm, did the horse tell him something he didn't want to hear <laughs> he couldn't bite the head off of it so this, this is this is what happened In tried the for end, six hours and my apologies, I can't do an Ozzy Osbourne impression. Nobody will understand what I'm saying. In the end, the horse turned around and told me to fuck off. That wasn't <laughs> that was it for me. In the end, the horse turned around and told me to fuck off. Shut up. <laughs> you know, we could probably understand the horse better than Ozzy most of the time. Oh, shit. Probably. <laughs> so, as uh, summer's wrapping up, Oscar Mayer has released a... Brand new type of guess what? Hot dog. Oscar Lunch Mayer bologna. Popsicle. Oscar Mayer popsicle. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it is called the cold dog. I'm getting indigestion just by listening to it. Does it come on a stick? It does come on a stick. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And uh, they do suggest that uh, it well it comes with a, also a mustard swirl. And it's and both refreshing, smoky, and has umami notes. <laughs> where, where, is this, of, where is this available I so I can watch somebody eat it? my mind around a savory <laughs> frozen treat. Uh, uh, I, I will tell you. So you can get it at uh, pop bar locations, which are in Long Beach, New York City, New Orleans, and Alpharetta, Georgia. Man, Long Beach would have some dumb shit like that. Yeah. yeah, it's Fucking in your neighborhood, hipsters. man. That's right. <laughs> you know, hey, in my day, Long Beach was the city part of the area, right? I mean, all they had was the the port. Yeah, yeah, Long yeah. Beach, right? Yeah. Hold on. Hold so, on. I need this. Anyways, yeah, I, I just don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Hell, uh, I'm freaking I'm willing, out. I'm willing to try it, but I just, I just, I don't know. Mm. I don't know uh, like somebody try. else buys it, maybe. I've got, I've got two hot dog related questions. They're two dollars a pop. Wow! Really? Yes. Wow. Forget it. That's an expensive hot dog. Never mind. Uh, and, and it's frozen on a stick. Where do you, where do you three stand on um the two types of cooking methods? Pick a pick a, a favorite: boiled hot dogs or either pan cooked or, or grilled. Grilled. I do boiled grilled. and grilled. I like grilled. I prefer grilled, but I mean, it, it, it uh, depends on my mood. 
And how well the meat is sucks the life out of a hot dog. No, I, I just I would I, I would like to say that I feel like a boiled hot dog is um a fucking war crime <laughs> uh against hot dogs. What is boiled yeah. hot dogs? And you go to New York and yeah. Most yeah. Of, you go to the East Coast, a lot of those areas boil their fucking hot dogs. You yeah. know, you know how how well, that's a fans whole, always that's say a whole like, whole. oh, 100 million fans can't be wrong. Yes, they can. <laughs> yes, they fucking can. I'm not even saying Elvis is bad. I'm just saying that many people can be wrong about some shit, including the entire fucking state of New York or the East Coast about boiled hot dogs. Now, and, you got to remember that that's that's a holdover from the fact that you had to kill the shit out of your pork if you're having a pork hot dog. Right. And that's why they were boiled to death. Yeah, and, I'd rather have it lit on fire. And put into a bun. This is know. why Jews always eat uh, uh, kosher hot dogs. Yeah, uh, and yeah. then also, what is what is your go to uh, uh, condiments for a hot dog and or toppings? Ketchup and mustard. Fuck relish. Ketchup, mustard, onions, and occasionally uh, horseradish. Depends horseradish. on the day of the week. I love. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd go with some onions sometimes. I, I mean, like onions. Bush dog, yeah, more like I, I'd be more willing to put hot, uh, you know, horseradish on it. But I mean, for just a straight beef straight hot dog, dog yeah. on the bun, I'm just generally going to go with ketchup and mustard. So Brian uh, looks like a ballpark. I think people who guy. only put ketchup on their hot dogs are under the age of ten, um, or shouldn't be doing that. If you go ketchup and mustard, I can't. I can't exactly talk too much shit. Um, <laughs> mustard and then i recently and this is this is a polarizing opinion i recently came around on sauerkraut mm. um yeah. my mom always used to eat it always looked gross smelled mm -hmm. gross had it on the dog a couple of months back not bad instant huh? fan like, yeah, sorry, like sorry. Oh, i've been kind of messing up for a while this is tasty and, and yeah. Ryan, i i gotta put a little bit of a disclaimer in there yeah uh. if i'm using if the only options are like Heinz crap condiments. Then it's ketchup and mustard. But if it's me, I'm fucking putting a spicy brown mustard. Thank yeah, you. me that's too. That's my dog yeah, right there. Too. And or that's why we're friends. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> that, that All right. Works. I'm going to really maybe either make you guys go, I can't believe this or not. But believe it or not, one of the ways I used to like as a kid, I haven't had it in a while, but I loved a hot dog wrapped in american cheese i i i don't immediately have it was have a hatred good. of that 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 yeah. might be i don't know I, I mean try it sometime uh, <laughs> I, I, I might have to try it sometime but <laughs> just try it i, I have thing. a lot of prejudice against plastic cheese yeah, yeah, yeah me, i don't me too I don't disagree with it, but there is something about American cheese, and, and especially. I, uh, I give that to you on a grilled cheese sandwich. There is there yeah. there really is no actual substitute for a flat grilled cheese, white bread, mm -hmm. and and buttered and American yep. cheese. Yeah, there is something it's, about that for me. It's kind I mean, of the I, exception to my rule. Isn't it partly? It's partly a way you grow up. It's and, childhood. You know, it's, like yeah, it's chicken noodle childhood, soup. So and oh, and or yeah, tomato yeah. soup. Tomato and that soup. Sandwich. Exactly. And exactly. The, the chef. Is it's a cure all. It's the white people cure all. You know, for <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, there's a few places I'll go to that that I give them a pass on putting American cheese on shit. And you know, it's like I don't go to McDonald's very often, but they're. More breakfast sandwiches, sure. You know, sure, I, yeah. I mean, American cheese is okay on that. Sure. Personally, I'm making my own. I am not using plastic cheese. Yeah. And yeah. then you know, if you go to Carl's Jr. or something like that, or some of the other fast food places, and they throw American cheese on, on their burgers. I mean, that's kind of like acceptable. Yeah, yeah it's one of those standards time, childhood thing. I, I just stay away from it. I just can't do it. I, I mean, on a burger, there are absolutely better cheeses. You know, oh, yeah. but I don't I don't consider it like like automatically disrespectful, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah. more shocked that uh, uh, Ryan did the Randy Jackson and said, that's my dog. I I, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't I'm, heard I'm that a child of the 90s and the early 2000s, bro. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh, and bra, I mean, you, you talk oh. to me for a couple hours. I'm probably going to say like the bomb about some shit. I actually wouldn't. I wouldn't say that anymore. Oh, you, you said the unforgivable one was bra. 
Oh, oh dude, I've, I've been saying that my entire life. It will, it will not stop. Bra, time, bro, brosif, brohemoth. See, bro, I get. Bra makes you sound slightly touched. Every time I've heard it, you say, <laughs> hey, bra. It's like, are, are anybody in there? Yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 very much a... Uh, uh, Stupid. Well, I'm 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 doing the inflection of the surfer thing on purpose. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, now, now you're trying to backpedal, dude. The um, no, I'm, I'm I'll still say it, you know, forever. But it but it is it is with some awareness. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> so, did you know the most dangerous tree on the planet can be found in Mexico, the Caribbean, and southern Florida? One touch from the tree sap causes blisters, and a single bite of its fruit can be fatal yes i did uh, know about this tree it's very it's a very interesting tree according and to it's also not the most dangerous what's the most dangerous the most obvious thing in the world a fucking coconut tree <laughs> oh, i was gonna say a falling tree <laughs> no you know how many you know how many people a year are murdered by coconuts murdered okay like five times as many as people killed by lightning the lightning is fucking everywhere. Coconuts are in like nine places, man. So that's one of the reasons Samoans are so tough is there's no coconut that's going to fall on a Samoan and die. Oh, no, no it's always tourists. You know, um, I mean, and there's always some Samoans who stand there like, bro, don't stand there. <laughs> Never stand under that tree, dude. <laughs> and I, I can't pronounce the, the tree to save my life. According to one researcher, Christopher Columbus referred to the tree fruit as manz, manzazilla de la merte, the, the little apple of death. You know they found that out the hard way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, somebody's got to find it. The out. indigenous people in Florida and the Caribbean used to dip arrowheads in the trees, poisonous milky sap to kill their enemies, according to the University of Florida. Yeah, they got Mikey. Go try it. <laughs> it's, it's 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 like the first guy they talked into testing one of those uh, those anti shark bite suits. Hey, Bob, put this on. Go over there. Yeah, somebody's got to test it out. What's the meat for? I don't worry. Just go swimming. The, those are um, because of coconuts. That's why helmets are invented. Yep. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, <laughs> uh, All right, John. It's time to wrap this up. One more thing. Walmart Plus is taking on Amazon Prime with this new membership perk. You get Paramount Plus. Oh, hell no. Do you want to keep up to date on the maddest of the mad at the Mad Trio podcast? Check out our social media feeds on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Or go to themadtrio.com. An additional just coming in. If you feel like Twitter. supporting the Mad Trio podcast, we do have a Patreon <laughs> at madtrio.com slash themadtrio. Throw us a couple of bucks, help to support the show. And for the for the California Pariah, for the fat man, the old guy, and uh, our special guest, as always. Bruh. Oh, <laughs> thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. What the fuck? Are you-